last play of the championship game. Home team down by four. Quarterback takes the snap, hands off to the running back. Running back breaks the line. He's at the 40, the 30, the 20. He trips. <laughs> On a gopher mound. Sprained his ankle, nearly broke his leg. The home team lost. The fans were devastated. And there's a lawsuit pending. All because of a gopher mound in the middle of the field. It was just like this one. See? Gopher mounds have this horseshoe shape. The entry hole is usually off to the side and is plugged. Now this is not a ground squirrel burrow. Their openings are about four inches in diameter and they're not plugged. Gophers are herbivores. Sometimes they'll eat the roots of tree and shrub seedlings, so they can do real damage to your landscaping. Here's another one. They are eating and earth moving machines. Now this mound is not a tripping hazard, but it still represents a problem. You see gophers, they can chew through the irrigation lines and in turf areas, the mowing equipment takes a real beating every time it runs over a gopher mound. With so many gopher mounds popping up, it may feel like you're fighting an army of gophers. Well, fear not. A little insight into gopher behavior and life cycle will go a long way in helping you manage those mound builders. One gopher can create 10 mounds in a day. Gophers are solitary animals, so there may only be one or two gophers tearing up your football field. They usually breed in early spring, so it's easiest to start managing them when their population is at its lowest, in the late winter. The sooner you take action, the better. Okay, let's talk about managing them. Underground fencing is a long-term solution to keep gophers out, but it can be labor-intensive and expensive. Consider it for smaller areas or around plants of high value. You can also install wire baskets when you put plants into the ground to protect their roots. You could try outsourcing your hunt for gophers by leaving it to the birds. Hawks and owls eat gophers, so you could put up hawk perches or install owl boxes along the fence lines. These are environmentally responsible options, but will likely not get rid of all the gophers. Trapping is your best option. You're not using pesticides, and you know you're successful when you see a gopher in a trap. Phil, our landscape IPM professional, will show us some of the traps available and how to use them. Phil? Well, we have a number of different traps available, and the reason that we switch them up, that's the integrated part of integrated pest management. We need to change our strategy periodically to try and catch all the animals. These are a claw trap. These are the most common used. You will dig the run out and put them back to back in case the gopher is coming from one direction or the other. This is a different kind of a claw trap with the same strategy, but it's just a different setting mechanism. These are called wire traps. Uh, there's two different sizes for different sized animals. Um, and they go, the advantage of these is that they'll go straight into the kick out run rather than having to dig out the whole burrow. And then these are modified box traps. The nice thing about these is that they can go into the kick out hole and stick out, out of the ground, or you can dig them and put them in back to back in the main run, catch them that way. With so many gopher mounds, how do you know where to place the traps? How about I show you? Let's go. Now what we have here is a, a gopher mound that I've been monitoring. What we can see here is that this is old activity. See how this is, the mound has been worn down, it's by the irrigation water and the mower. So I know that that's old, but right here, we have a brand new kick out. This is a beautiful thing. I think this is an active run and it probably kicked it out just this morning. Now what's a kick out? A kick out is when there, there's a main run that the gopher uses for transportation, but as they're digging, they have to have a place to put the dirt. So they'll dig these laterals that are called kick outs. It's a way for them to push the dirt out of the main run so they can keep going. Makes this nice little horseshoe shape here. Yeah, it's, and it's a perfect one right here. Now, what we want to do is find that main run. And because this is old activity and this is new activity, it's probably going in this direction. So we want to take our probe and we want to start digging around and wait, we can push in and you start to feel where it, it gives. Just like that, did you see that? Right. Right, so that means what we found is the main run, there was a main tunnel and the probe goes down, boom, and goes right through it. So what we do now, I know where the main run is, I want to take my spade and start to dig this out. And I like to make a nice square plug. So when I come back, it'll fit right back in. What I do is I take this plug and I get it out of the way. And then I dig around. Oh, this is a really good one. 
Now, I don't know if you can see this, but there's a run that goes that way and one that goes that way. That's why we have two traps. We don't know which way the gopher will be coming from. So we take our trap, and we set it. You can see that it's got the prongs are up and this is the trigger. When it comes through this way, hits this trigger, it'll spring. So we put that in the hole there. You can see it doesn't take very long to do this and get that back in the run there. All right, and then you have these wires here so if it catches it, it doesn't uh, run away with it. We take it and we put our plug back on the hole. We kind of fill in around it. Now my goal, the way I like to do this, is to make this plug disappear. We can come back and check this in an hour, we could check it tomorrow morning, but we don't want children messing with it. So what I usually do is take a piece of uh, can of spray paint, and I always face in the same direction, and I go an arm's length away, and I make a circle and an X, all right? Now, if a child comes out and wants to mess with the spray paint, they're gonna go over there, but they're never gonna see this. When I come out tomorrow or this afternoon to check this mound, I'm gonna come and look for this. I'm gonna look in the same direction and I know it's gonna be an arm's, direct, an arm's length away. And we'll come here and pull the plug out and pull the traps and see if we got anything. What's important is that, you know, this is a continuous process. We need to get out in the field and do this once a week or maybe twice a week or every other week, depending upon how the populations shift and you've noted with your monitoring. So when we are trapping, it's a continuous process. We always have to be on it. There will be seasons where it comes up and comes down, but we have to always stay on it depending upon our monitoring. It's fantastic advice. Thanks so much, Phil. Oh, you bet. So trapping is the way to go. But if your monitoring shows that you're not getting below your acceptable levels, you may need to take additional action. And this brings up rodenticides. Many baits and other rodenticides require the person applying them to be a licensed professional. If used incorrectly, they can injure non-target wildlife or even people. So it's best to contact a pro if you're even thinking about using rodenticides. Let's review the most important points. Safety first. Don't set traps without burying them completely and keeping a close eye on them. Consult with a pest management professional if you need to use rodenticides. And keep good records so you can understand your gopher population and see if your management efforts are paying off. So that's our lesson on gophers. Now don't go away because in our next video we'll be getting into the weeds. Turf grass weeds to be specific.